Hi guys, I am back and I am super pumped for 2020. So I'm going to kind of give you a recap of what I've been doing and um, why I'm back and I'm going to change my channel a little bit. So I hope that you stick around and enjoy um, some of the content that I'm about to put out. So it's been, gosh, it's been um, a long time since I've vlogged. It's been like two years since I last came on and all of you guys who are my followers up until now know that my vlog was based on dieting and HCG and um, struggled with that a lot. I've been working outside my home for almost seven years now. When I started doing HCG in, gosh, it was like 2011, I think. Um, I was working inside my home, um, really enjoyed it. I was a work at home mom and um, somewhere along the line about, oh, 2013 came along. Um, I did some odds and ends. I was a preschool teacher for a couple of school years. Um, I think it was back in 2011. No, it was before that. Um, but anyway, um, long story short, um, you know, I've worked outside my home for a long time now. And I've always enjoyed working for myself. Um, that's just the type of person I've always been. Um, and I really, really miss it. Um, just to kind of give you guys a background, I used to work at home online for several years. I did my own um, retail business online. It was just an online store. I first started probably in 1999 where I did affiliate marketing for a while. I, I mean, I did pretty good. I made some good money during that time and um, I really enjoyed it. It kind of got my feet wet into working at home and it was great being a stay-at-home mom, um, being able to earn some income uh, inside my home. So anyway, I did that for a little bit. Um, then 9-11 happened and um, I was making decent money. I was probably making 30, 40,000 a year at home doing affiliate marketing. Worked my tail off um, doing that, trying to recruit. That's really hard. Um, that's the bad part of affiliate marketing. So after that, um, I started getting into doing my own store online. I was drop shipping. Um, that was really hard. It started out great at first. Um, anybody who's done drop shipping before will probably know what I'm talking about. Um, any resellers out there who um, have tried to do drop shipping, you probably know how competitive it is. Um, a lot of drop shippers end up using the same drop shipping companies or same um, wholesale companies to get their product from. It's very competitive. Um, did very well at first um, and then it just wore me out. Um, it got very repetitive and very boring doing the same thing over and over again. Um, so I just, I lost interest. I felt like I had to do more and more work to make any money. People were, you know, that saying in the resale or retail, online retail industry, um, it was like a race to the bottom. And it's very frustrating, you know, when you have a product and 20 other stores have that product. And it, it was very discouraging that, um, I have a spot on my shirt. No, it's just my camera. <laughs> um, but it's very discouraging when you're trying to compete and then it was like a numbers game for me. It's like, okay, I just got a list. I got a list. I got a list. I got a list. And I was listing products constantly. And I was so tired. Um, it was just boring, repetitive work online. And um, I just got to the point to where um, I just wanted something new. And so during that time period, I worked a couple of school years. I worked as a preschool teacher um, at... Um, the church I went to at the time. And then I just decided after a while, 
um, that I was, you know, I've been staying at home for a long time. I decided to, to give it a change and I started working outside the home for a little bit. Um, so anyway, um, that's been good. I've learned a lot of things working outside the home. I work for a um, local restaurant, um, fast food restaurant that is extremely, extremely busy. And um, I've done everything in that restaurant. Um, I did marketing for the last four years and just recently I've moved into just an administrative type role. Um, so in the past year, I've just, I'd say a little bit over a year ago, I kind of decided where do I want to go from here? I'm getting older. Um, I'm not 50 yet. I'm, I just turned 47 recently. Um, but I'm just looking for something more. I've always been the type of person that I like to work at home. I like to be my own boss. I motivate myself. Um, so that's kind of where I've been. So this last year in 2019, early on, probably December of 2018, I started doing some research on what can I do at home. And I came across different things, you know, I looked at maybe crafting and selling my crafts, you know, making tumblers, this and that. And um, so I started diving into YouTube videos of different people. And um, I just really could not figure out what am I passionate about. And I still don't quite know exactly what I'm passionate about, but I'm willing to learn and grow and, you know, discover new things. So along the lines, early last year in January, I started watching a lot of reselling videos. I've been watching resellers for the last year. A lot of the popular resellers. Um, I watch them all the time. I never comment. Um, I'm kind of one of those lingerer people on YouTube that I watch a ton of content and then I don't comment. Now, I kind of, you know, my point of doing a video now is I'm trying to get better. Um, I'm, I want to get more motivated to um, be out there as a YouTuber and to be motivated with my own business. And when I did HCG and I vlogged all the time, I was really motivated and I was engaged with other HCGers and things like that. So I want to get back to that point. I really loved vlogging. Um, but the past six to seven years, it started to get harder and harder for me to vlog because it wasn't my priority. HCG wasn't my priority. Um, dieting wasn't my priority. Working outside the home took a lot of just energy from me. And so earlier this year, I watching all these resellers and their videos, I really enjoyed um what they had to offer. So I ran into reselling and I ran into Amazon, FBA, FBM, um, eBay resellers, um, people who do, do retail arbitrage, all those kinds of things. And I just dove into um, watching, watching those people. You ever look at yourself on the camera and go, oh my God, I'm so stupid looking. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I dove into watching um, resellers um, and just doing all sorts of different things and it fascinated me. And so in February of 2019, last year, I decided to start going forward and um, look and just, I just hopped right into trying to become a reseller. I made mistakes along the way. There's some things that I bought that I'm kind of stuck with right now, and I'll talk about that in a different video, um, but intrigued me. So along the way, like watching these other resellers, I'm like, I could totally do that. Um, I just, I love it, and it's so fascinating to me to see the stuff that people find, whether it's bidding on a storage unit online auctions, um, estate sales and garage sales and flea markets, um, and just all these different avenues of being able to find things that are kind of cool and unique and valuable. I mean, sure, you've got some of the normal stuff that you flip 
for a profit, but it's just really fascinating stuff to me. So I decided that that's what I wanted to do. So I, I started to buy some product. I had a little bit of money and I dove into Amazon and I sent some product in and I did really well the first month, like for the limited amount of money that I had, I generated like $350 um, sales. No, that was profit, excuse me. It wasn't sales, it was actual profit. Um, and I mainly was doing Amazon and then I was kind of moving over to adding stuff onto eBay and things like that. But along the line, there were some crisis things happening in my family during that time. My oldest son, struggling with his marriage at the time my daughter was living here with my son-in-law um, to try to better themselves financially and then my oldest son came and stayed with us and there was just a lot of things so my mind I am very very family oriented person my kids are like the priority over pretty much everything else outside of our family life um you know, God first and then my family. And so when things happen to my kids or anything like that, I'm very, um, I, I'm, I'm very sensitive person and I just have a really hard time, um, coping and, you know, I pray a lot and, and dealing with the anxiety and the stress of life. So, I kind of put my resale business on hold. I still had products on Amazon since February. I still had products on eBay, but I wasn't growing my eBay business. And so I realized cl getting closer to the end of this past year, like, what am I doing? You know, I'm just sitting here just not doing anything. And I want more, but I haven't been motivated to do that. So I'm trying to change my way of thinking and start to get motivated on what will satisfy me in my life, what makes me happy. Well, I think that reselling makes me very happy because the stuff that you find is just so cool. I can't really explain it. Um, so that's where I'm at. I am going to focus my channel on my experiences with reselling items, my experiences with finding items. I hope one day to be able to work at home full time again. And my husband, I have dragged him into watching YouTube videos. We watch a lot of cool resellers online and um, it's just more fun to me to, to put YouTube up on my TV and watch what people are finding and what they're selling than it is to watch everyday TV. I still watch some normal TV, but for the most part, I watch a lot of reselling videos, and my husband was probably annoyed with me at first when I put them on, but then like people getting diving into uh, storage units and auctions and and you know finding stuff at Goodwill, even it's just intriguing, and it's like. You just get sucked into the reselling life. So I've kind of <laughs> brought my husband on board and now he started joking around with me the last couple weeks. When are you gonna make the big bucks so I can quit my job and help you? And the last couple of days I joked around because I told him I needed to start on my YouTube channel again and I joked around going, you just wait, I'm going to reel you in. So you're going to have to uh, be on the videos with me. And my husband's like, no, 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 absolutely not. Well, maybe I can sneak him in or something. I don't know. Um, you know, only time will tell. So anyway, I wanted to let you guys know, and I'm in my room. That's my resale room. As you can see back here, it is super messy. Like, I can't even show you the floor right now because it's very messy. So um, I'm trying to get organized a little bit. Um, I do have boxes that are numbered and those boxes, not all of them are full, um, but I'm trying to be somewhat organized. I have a lot of work to do. I love to buy things and I think this is a common thing with resellers is I like to buy things, 
but the listing part of it is just so it gets so boring sometimes I just like to shop um, and I don't even care to keep things I just like I'm fascinated with finding things so like right now I don't want to show you my whole office because it's super messy but down there in that box that this box right here is a box of Sports Illustrated magazines this box was actually full this was a lot that I won at an auction and it's full of Sports Illustrated magazines from 1972 to about 1981 and some years don't have very many issues some have more so I spent time on eBay checking the sold comps um, and so that box was full I've listed some I actually listed all of them into my drafts on eBay so now I just have to take pictures of all my magazines and I'll show you my I'll show you my setup it's over here you can't see it but I'll show you that on a different video um, but I probably made this first video long enough but I just want to let you guys know this is where I'm at my video is going to start talking about reselling and the things that I've sold, maybe the things that I find. Um, and so I hope you guys um, enjoy the content that I put out um, along the way. I hope you find it interesting if you came here for HCG. Right now, my dieting thing's on hold. I was doing keto, keto carnivore, um, and then I went on a trip in late October and I did really well I stayed keto within five days I gained like 13 pounds I think I just don't travel well and I probably wasn't drinking enough water I was not overeating I ate too much cheese um but I really found that I like to do carnivore um but I'm not at that point yet I kind of took a break from November till now um, but I, I may talk a little bit about what I'm doing personally because, you know, this is my channel. Um, so I may just talk a little bit about everything. I don't know. But right now I'm going to focus on reselling. Um, I hope that what I say is interesting enough for you guys to stick around. Um, but I did. Last thing I wanted to show you today. This is kind of one of the coolest things that I think I have found so far. Um, and I just wanted to show you, I just won this at an auction and I picked it up and I wanted to show you what it is. My husband calls it creepy doll. I just picked it up. Um, but it's this cool, let's see. It's this cool mannequin from the fifties. His name, um, it's Paul Winchell's Jerry Mahoney ventriloquist dummy. And I was, I was joking around with my husband because I just picked him up today from an auction that I won. And um, I was joking around with my husband because I have some mannequins that I was using for clothing at first. And then I thought, oh, that's a pain in the butt. So I don't use the mannequins right now. But when I was first using the mannequins and my daughter lived here, I would set up the boy and the girl mannequin around the corner just to freak them out. Um, so in my husband, it would scare the crap out of my husband sometimes. Like we knew they were there, but they going around the corner really fast, you'd forget that they were there. So it would scare you. So I was joking around with my husband telling him that I was going to hide this mannequin in places so like he would open the closet door and this mannequin would be like staring at him. So he's kind of freaked out. He's worried that I'm going to do that to him. But this mannequin is just so cool to me. Like I wanted him and I was willing to pay up a little bit for him because I just thought he was so cool and vintage. Um, I ha This is the first time I pulled him out of the box. Like I said, I just picked him up today. He's got a little bit of um, damage on his fingers. I mean, not damage, but you know, aging, like cracked aging. Um, but he's really cool. Um, and the comps show on eBay that somebody sold one of these, and he didn't even have his hat. Um, somebody sold one of these for $350. Um, I paid, I don't want to tell you what I paid. 
Um, I paid over a hundred. I paid less than one forty. Um, but I just thought he was cool. So I wanted to buy him. I don't know if he works. I haven't had time to test him out. He's just really, really cool. Um, here is his body. Um, and then he's got these little vintage shoes um, on. So he's got his outfit on. I haven't seen one of these with a hat. So the guy at the auction house told me that he does like, you know, someone else from Pennsylvania called and was asking about him if he had sold. And of course I bought him for the, you know, I bid on him from the auction. And so he had told him, yeah, he did end up selling and the guy really wanted him. Um, but the interesting story of this one is when I went to pick him up, he's like, do you know how valuable he is? I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and, um, but he, he told me this came from a judge, a judge's house. Um, and he went, I guess he went to the house to look at other items because this auction was not, this was like several estates. This was different items. It wasn't a, just one estate auction. Um, but he, anyway, he told me that, um, that um, when he went to the house, they had, and he comes with his box. He doesn't have a paper in there. Like I think the original one came with a paper. Um, but he does have his box. Let me see if I can get it and show you. So this is his box that he comes with. Really cool. Um, so he does come with that. He doesn't come with the paper or whatever originally came with it, but he is intact. He has his shoes. He has his clothes and all of that. I hope this hat goes with, with him because I haven't seen one like that. I didn't see one not like that on eBay. Um, but anyway, I'm sorry. The When he went to the house, he said this was in the trash. Like, I said, were they young? Because I you'd think, I mean, people, it's interesting to me. People don't really know what the value is of items. Um but yeah, they put him in the trash and they just didn't think he was worth anything. So they had him in the trash and then he asked if he could have him or take it or whatever he said. Um, but I was like, wow. And then I asked if they were young and he said, oh, they were in their thirties. But, you know, I just thought you are cool in his I mean, looking at him closely now, like he's got a little bit of a scratch right there, but look at that. He is in his makeup and stuff. His paint is in pretty good condition. Like, I'm impressed. So, it's kind of nerve-wracking buying something before you've actually seen it. I just didn't have time to go when I could view the auction. I didn't have time to go look at it because I was working, but anyway... That is my story. This is my first video of many. Um, I hope you guys had a great new year. Um, I look forward to 2020. The past decade was rough. This year was rough. But I'm ready to start over and start my new adventure in reselling. So I hope that you guys stay tuned to see all of the cool stuff that maybe I can get. I can't always get cool stuff like him. But hey, he is kind of creepy, isn't he? He's like a horror movie. I don't know. Do I want to sell him right away or keep him and freak out my husband a little bit? So anyway, have a good new year. Um, I'm going to try to vlog often. I know it's going to take a little bit. I may have to make a few videos in one day and spread them out or something. Um, but I can't wait to share my journey with you guys. And um, I will see you next time.